what's up with it, everybody? I'm, I'm, I'm Chosen, a Vice Record Radio, and uh, we're, we're here today to interview Marcus Parker, a man that has uh, a list of accomplishments a mile long, but we're not going to focus on any of that today. We're going to ask the questions that people really want to know. Um, so this interview is going to be a little bit unique, a little bit different than what you've probably been used to. And, uh, you know, I hope y'all enjoy So without further ado, Marcus Parker, why don't you go ahead and, uh, you know, just tell the, the people a little briefly, you know, a little bit more about yourself and, and uh, you know, what it is that you do in entertainment. All right. Well, uh, my name is Marcus Parker. Uh, some people call me Unpositive. Um, I'm originally from Port Arthur, Texas, born and raised. Um, you know, I'm actually, I, I was an author. I wrote a book called The Product in 2004. Um, it became a Dallas Morning News bestseller, and you know, it kind of started the rotation, really. Um, the book was an autobiography, and it was something about teaching people how to take all the negative things in your life and turn it into something positive. So what happened was, I started going to schools, and when I went to schools, I would talk to the kids, and they would be like feeling me like, man, I like what you're talking about, whatever. But they really was no uh, no theme music that went along with what I was doing. So, you know, people would always tell me, like, I was always into music. I always made rap. I always wrote raps. I used to do poetry and win poetry contests and all that kind of stuff. So I just decided I'm going to make a form of music that goes along with my message. So it, it came out being motivational rap. So, you know, motivational rap is something that I came up with and it became something that people, of course, thought it was crazy because everybody wanted rap music to be about, you know, guns and, and violence and everything and whatnot. But, you know, I started making music about uplifting people and trying to, you know, make the world a better place and trying to, you know, make you realize that there was more to life than just negativity. Yeah, man, a lot of people don't know, my favorite thing to do is swim. I love getting my Michael Phelps on, and this is what I do. So I get a chance to come out in the backyard in the evenings, man, and just relax. And that's, that's just what I do. I don't, I'm don't. i a real laid back, I'm a homebody. I don't like going out a lot, you know what I mean? I, I stay at home unless I'm making music or doing something. But this is where I do it. Yeah. So, you know, I'm right here in my yard. Texas heat. Y'all don't know about this Texas heat, man. It gets hot in Dallas, Texas. I was currently living in Dallas, but uh, a lot of people don't know about this Dallas heat. So we had to step up the house and see if we can get a little, uh, get our little basketball on, you know what I'm saying? But this is where I like to play with the kids, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I'm, I'm a homebody, man. For me, the most fun thing I have is being at house and being at home, you know, being in my house, you know, chilling with the youngsters and whatever. I'm, I'm really, like I said, I'm not the club scene, it's not me. I enjoy being at home, man. So, you know, this is what I do. When, you know, you're not seeing me, I'm not making music or something, I'm missing shots. <laughs> In the studio of Marcus Parker, um, I guess where all the, the great thinking and the ideas come from here in your home. Um, one of the things that we wanted to throw in was a couple of extra tidbits and, and, and extra cool special facts. You know, I guess kind of touch base on some of the things that you never really talk about. Uh, coming out of PA, first off, you know what I'm saying? People want to know, you know, do you know UGK? Have you, do you know DJ DMD? Do you know any of the great names that have come from that, from that city? Right. Well, the funny thing is, uh, Pimp C and I actually went to school together, right? I knew him in middle school, and then we went to high school together. And so it's funny because I didn't know him. I mean, you know, I knew him as Chad Butler, you know what I mean? He was a guy, cool dude, you know what I'm saying? And, and he was real, you know, he had a, a good sense of humor, but he was a singer. He would sing, like, really, really well. So if you ask anybody who was there at that time in Port Arthur, they would, if they asked you about Chad, you know, prior to the, the Pimp C era or whatever, they would think, man, Chad used to be in the choir going hard, you know what I'm saying? The boy could right. sing real well. Well, um, 
the last time that I actually saw him, he was a, a year ahead of me, right? So I came out of high school in 1993, you know what I'm saying? He came out in 1992. Um, but the last time I saw him, I was maybe a junior in high school, and I had a car. You know, back then, you know, we used to put, like, uh, booming systems in, in cars, right? So, right. you know, I was, I was into it, but I played baseball, right? So I was coming back from baseball practice, and we pulled up. And one of his classmates, it was two dudes that with me, uh, they they basically had the UGK uh, uh, tape, cassette. It was uh, it's called Southern Way, right? It was a little right. blue uh, actual cassette. So for everybody out there who don't remember cassettes, it was, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is 1990. Right. It was either 91 or 92, in right in that era, right? But uh, so we had a cassette. So. Here it is, I look at his Chad. He's he's pulled up to school, you know what I mean? And, and as we get out of the car, we're listening to his song on the thing. Now we, this was no, nobody knew, you know, them at that time. But you know, I, I just remember him hitting like, you know, oh dang, like, you know that, that very first, and you being an artist, you know how it is the first time you hear somebody drive up playing your music or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But that was my last story. I mean, you know, that's the last time I actually physically saw him, you know, face to face uh, back then. Because, you know, of course, I joined the military after I graduated. And, you know, and then one thing led to another. But I did know his wife, you know, Shannara and her brother. My mother used to babysit. So, you know, she and her brother would be like in my house all the time. You know what I mean? We went to church together and everything. So it was one of them type of deals. So, you know, small place, man, you know, what? real small real small area you know um as far as uh dj dmd who you mentioned uh uh i didn't know him know him because he was he's actually older than than all of us uh you know a few years so by the time i got to high school he had already uh graduated you know because i mean all of us pretty much went to the same you know it was only a couple of schools in the area anyway okay. but he had already graduated by the time i got there so, but I did know him from, there was a store in Port Arthur called Music World. Okay. And he used to actually be the guy behind the counter at Music World. I don't know if his family owned it or whatever, but I would see him in there all the time. And, you know, to the point where he would, you know, he was cool. He would hook you up. Like if there was a new whatever, you know, out of Houston, he was, that was like the hub where the guys would come into town and see what was going as far as music being sold in Port Arthur. So that was, you know, that was what that was. Now you said his mother. You you actually had a chance to uh, talk to uh, Mama West, Pimp C's mother. Yeah. And she left you with some in encouraging yeah, words. Yeah. Tell us briefly about that. A she bit. um well my partner first of all, uh, Tim Hampton. If y'all don't know Tim Hampton, like go check him out. Uh, he got a series of books called Holding My Own, and uh, like Holding My Own, still holding my own. He held his own, and you know brother now now Tim was like. He was that kid from Port Arthur. His mother was murdered when he was younger, right? He was like, uh, I don't know, we were maybe 12, 13. His mother was murdered. Like a, she was a bus driver. And a little kid got on the bus and shot his mom in the back of the head and killed him. So Tim, you know, was, you know, kind of like, you know, when you say hardcore, that, that's hardcore to me. You know what I'm saying? Grow up and live through something like that and then talk to me. You know what I'm saying? But that's my partner. And uh, anyway, you know, uh, Chad's mom kind of like, you know, took to Tim and kind of, you know, put her under his wing. So him and Pimp C were kind of like brothers in, in, you know, in that sense. So one day, like maybe, I don't know, six years ago or whatever, I happened to be in Port Arthur. He was in Port Arthur. So, you know, we were hanging out or whatever. And he was like, hey, man, let's go to mama's house or whatever. So we went over there and, you know, she, she had my book actually on the shelf, matter of fact. It was this one right here, you know, the product. This was the first, this was actually the first book, right? So she was telling me like, oh man, you know, how, you know, every people who came here read the book talking about, yeah, I know Marcus, whatever. But anyway, she heard my music and she told me, she said, you know what? She said, your music is going to take off. You're just ahead of your time. You know what I mean? And that was her word of wisdom for me. You know what I mean? And I, I appreciated it because it was a... Right. It was an honor for her to look at it like that. She was like, you know, when I was, uh, you know, UGK's manager, she said, we used to do shows and nobody would come and all that kind of stuff, but it took time. And after, you know, time, it, it grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. But she said, what you're doing 
it's just, you know, it's gonna take people a while to get used to that, to accept, like, okay, different, you know, any kind of change takes time. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that was it, though, so, you know, but, but big ups to my partner, you know, Tim, like I say, really go check out his, his stuff, man. You know, he got books and audio books and stuff like that, and we were kind of like the two young black authors from Port Arthur because we both went back to, you know, went back to schools and stuff and started, you know, trying to give back to uh, other kids who may be going through the type of stuff we went through. Well, in, in conclusion, I just wanted to ask you about, you know, real briefly, when you wrote that book, and I'm glad you showed that the product, you know what I'm saying? You also, you know, did television appearances, you know, speaking engagements, Potter's House, all big, 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 big use, et cetera. You know, uh, radio play here, um, which is not an easy feat to accomplish, you know. Uh, when you ran into Ricky Smiley, you know, the guy was, was, was really encouraged by what he read. He liked what he read, but I'm, you can tell the story better than I. Real briefly, right. before we get out of here, before I we get in this. Well, uh, Ricky Smiley used to work at uh, 97.9, which is a radio station here in uh, Dallas. Right. And this was like, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, eight years ago or something. Well, long story short, uh, his assistant, Gary, is from Port Arthur. So, you know what I mean? So he- Gary with a T? Gary, Gary with a T. <laughs> He's from Port Arthur. Yeah, yeah, seriously. So, you know, he was, uh, you know, he actually, you know, I went to the, to the station. I used to drop stuff off and whatnot or whatever. And so, uh, you know, uh, DJ Big Bink actually had given my book to Ricky Smiley for me one day, you know what I'm saying? And so Ricky read it. So he tell me, you know, I met him in the mall and he was like, hey man, uh, you know, uh, he said, man, this is good. You know what I mean? I like what you own, man. This is positive. And he was telling me that he gave it to, he said, I gave it to my uncle. I told him, man, you need to read this. You know what I'm saying? So he, he showed me some love, man. He, he really did. And I look forward to, you know, meeting him again. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, now that I've, I've been able to kind of grow the, the brand a bit, because this was, like I say, it was years ago where it was a time when I only had a book. And that's what I was pushing. And then, you know, since then, you know, I've made a lot of music and videos and training videos and, and, and everything. So, you know, that's it. So real briefly, if anybody's trying to get a hold of the product, the final product, you know, um, Motivational Rap University, all the different things that you've been a part of, again, where can they go out? Oh, and, uh, and get Marcus, Just go to check out MarcusParker.com, MotivationalRap.com, and you know, and you can, you know, Google me, uh, Twitter me, whatever, tweet me, tweet me, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you know, just I mean, stay in touch. I hope that everybody can grow from it. And I want to say too, since we're doing this, that you know what it's about is growth, man. You know, it's about growing as a person. And all I want to do in life, I don't want people to grow up to be like me. I want people to grow up, you know, young people to grow up, or even like older people who have had dreams and may not have actually taken off on them for one reason or another. I want to do something that will inspire that, that, that element so that, you know, to spark your dream on. Because I, I look at it like this, the cure for cancer is already here. But say if that person is trying to do something else and they got a talent for medicine to cure cancer. So now if that person took care of his talent, then we wouldn't have to worry about cancer. You see what I'm talking about? Right. And so like all I do is work my talent. You know what I mean? I, I can't play basketball. Y'all saw me downstairs missing shots left and right. I can't, I can't do, I wasn't a very good at a, a whole lot of stuff. It's like I can't cook. I can't do a lot. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I'm worse. I'm bad at more stuff than I'm good, <laughs> than I'm good at. And I want everybody to know that. It ain't about the stuff that you are not good at. It's about the things that you have talent for doing. So if anybody out there, man, who really appreciated what we're trying to do here, I just hope that you use your talents to the best and to the fullest so that you can give back to the world the talent or the, the gift that God has given you. Well, this is Charles and the Vice Booker Radio signing off again with another special spotlight interview with my man, Marcus Parker, a.k.a. Impositive. Y'all be sure to go out and check out MotivationalRap.com. Also, be sure to check out MarcusParker.com. And if you forget all of that, just Google it, and you'll find whatever it is that, that, that you're looking for. All of the social networks, 
uh, Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, you name it. Yes, that's right. You know, all of that stuff is available. So, y'all yeah, definitely support something that's positive. Parents, uh, students, teachers, ministers, wherever you are in the world, no matter what it is, as long as you're coming on a positive tip, Marcus Parker is the pinnacle of that arena. So, we appreciate y'all. And y'all keep it locked. We're going to have other interviews coming up shortly. All right. Appreciate you. Peace. It's motivational rap, and if you never heard of it, you may think what the nerve of it is rap or just a curve a bit. Lyrics you feel without the dirty spit, hit a curve your nervousness and probably boy deserved to get. Now let me rewind to page one, back when motivational rap and it just begun. I was just a dude who lived through many hard times, wrote it in a book, but they'd rather hear it through hard rhymes. Travels to schools, they telling me they love the way I flow, but can't figure out why they can't hear me on the radio. They say you're on to something, but don't know what to call it. It's Inspirational lyrics to uplift you, Marcus, you all let I took it in stride, cause it was like a joke How can I be so loved and still be broke? Barely getting by, but people say I'm so fly Marcus, your music's just so much better than the other guys It started getting better, I booked a few gigs Some standing ovations and my pockets filled up with ends And wouldn't you know, before my progress could excite me Some bad decisions I made years ago came back to bite me So now I'm in court telling the judge that I'm a good guy Who straightened up his life, can you let me off just this one time? I made some Mistakes back in the day, I'm slanging money. But your honor, I realized I was behaving like a dummy. That's when I made a change and jumped back in my lane to encourage these youngsters not to get caught up in the game. So now I got probation with six months of house arrest, a half a million to pay back, and I promise I do my best. And that's just what I'm doing, actively pursuing my purpose, never nervous, just looking forward to the day I can surface. Cause I don't need no more props, no street cred, no recognition. I'm dripping with ambition, with my focus locked on my mission. No time for no dissing, no pointing fingers or being petty, but I would love to be your favorite rapper if you would let me I got off track but let's get back to the fact that I don't curse in my verses and I pray that you got my back as I stay in my lane though I may never see fame I'm cool if the masses never screaming my name long as I did my part to ignite a little spark in somebody who might possibly knock it about the park cause it ain't about me it's about the person I can help to take it to the next level that's the meaning of wealth thankful for the opportunity to be a blessing remember your hard times is really only a lesson so I hope you like the story how I learned to adapt and please support your boy with this motivational rap uh. ha, yeah